Hi, I'm, I'm Maxim Lukyanov, Program Manager on Big Data Team at Microsoft. I work on R Server and Spark products in Azure SD Inside Service. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can use R Server and Spark to run R machine learning models on large production scale datasets. In open source R, execution model of R programs is limited by the size of machine operating memory. This is problematic if you need to analyze dataset of larger size. Frequently, when developers receive R programs from data scientists for production deployment, they have to record it in a different language, which scales better. Data scientists are also limited in their ability to experiment on larger datasets. R server solves this problem by providing large library of parallelized machine learning algorithms. The algorithms have fast C++-based implementation, which uses Spark as a computation engine to distribute computation on a cluster of machines. We released initial preview of this functionality in Azure HD Inside Service in the spring of this year. And today, I'm excited to announce that of November 16, we make our server on HD Inside generally available. In addition to that, we also released new version of our server. Version 9.0 is upgraded to use latest version of Spark, Spark 2.0, which also provides a new direct connectivity to Spark data sources. The latter is a highly anticipated feature by our customers, which connects world of R programs to the world of Hadoop data formats. Now we can run R analytics directly over data in Parquet or RC format, or even data in external Spark data sources, such as Cassandra, HBase, Kafka, or Solar. There are in total more than 40 Spark data sources on Spark packages repository that are now available for you in R language. Let's take a closer look at the new features. We'll start with open source R, where we'll build simple logistic regression model. In R, it's very easy to do, uh, because the language was designed for statistical tasks. First, we'll read data into a data frame using one of the read functions in R. And then we'll use GLM algorithms to build the model. To switch to parallelized R several algorithms, we'll replace function names with corresponding parallelized versions of the algorithms from R server. As you can see, the syntax of the function definitions remains largely the same as in regular R. This makes conversion process fairly easy. After conversion, by default, R server will run this algorithm in parallel, but only using cores of the machine on which it is running. To distribute computations or nodes in Spark cluster, we'll need to add additional instruction and set computation context uh, to Spark. And this is where a new feature comes into the picture. Now that we are in the Spark world, we can also read data from Spark data sources. In this example, we instruct our server to read data directly from Parquet file using Rx Parquet data function. We can also use Rx Hive data function to read from any Hive table and correspondingly from any Spark data source that is associated with that table. Now let's see how this looks in practice. Okay, let's get started by connecting to our R server cluster in HD Inside. This is an SSH session connected to the edge node of our R server cluster. It has two, ten, uh, 10 nodes. And as you can see, we are running, I'm running a Spark shell on this cluster and uh, the Spark is version 2.0. Uh, R server clusters come equipped with all of the Spark capabilities, so I can uh, combine basically uh, R server workloads with uh, Spark workloads. So let's take a look what have what we have on this cluster. So we can do that simply by using a show tables command from Spark. So this command will show us what tables we have. One of, uh, so there are a couple of tables on this cluster, and one of them is called flight, which contains uh, flight information uh, about uh, arrival delays uh, and arrival times of uh, different airplanes. So this is a particular table of interest, uh, and let's take a look at what it contains. Oh, and small typo here. Let's fix that. So there is a few uh, few columns in this table. It's a very simple sample table. It has an arrival delay and a day of the week. So we can use these two columns to do some machine learning uh, later on. But one first thing that is uh, very natural for me to do is to convert this table into a Parquet format to, uh, to achieve better performance. Parquet is a columnar-oriented compressed file format that allows to improve performance of data operations uh, by an order of magnitude. 
So we, we can convert into a parquet by using this uh, simple uh, snippet of code. We can uh, specify uh, Spark SQL query and then use a write command from Spark to uh, write this uh, result of this query into a parquet format into this uh, file. In the process, we'll also filter some of the missing values from the dataset and overall prepare it, shape it uh, to be uh, ready for our machine learning workload. So let's do that. The sample uh, that I'm uh, working with here is a fairly small one and it takes just a few seconds to convert the dataset. So let's notice this path in our distributed file system where this uh, file now resides. Now we can use this path and new feature in our server to read, uh, to perform some R analytics over this file directly from our code. So let's switch now uh, to RStudio. So RStudio is running on our cluster uh, and it's one of the preferred IDEs by our developers. Uh, and uh, you can see here a little bit uh, error here that uh, says that about missing uh, certificate. This is because I'm using a pre-release version of the cluster and uh, obviously when we release our server, uh, this, uh, this error will not surface. So please ignore it. So now that we are in our studio, we have an R script that uh, is programmed to uh, perform some uh, simple linear regression model. So let's take a look at the code. First, we define some columns where we'll use day of, day of the week to specify uh, various levels of these columns. And second, we are specifying various location of our data is. Our server is configured to have access to all of the distributed file systems in the cluster, so we simply use the path of the parquet file that we just created uh, to point uh, our server to, to, uh, to it, to the data. So we use Rx parquet data function here. We can also use Rx hive data to point it to, a particular, uh, to any arbitrary uh, hive table in the R cluster. So second, we are specifying Rx spark function and uh, set and use it to set compute context of the R server to use Spark cluster for computation. And finally, we can use our xlin mode function to uh, trigger uh, evaluation or building of the linear regression model that simply calculates um, dependency between arrival delay and day of the week. So let's run this code and see what happens. Uh, now that we triggered this execution, what happens behind the scene, our server contacts the Spark cluster and creates a Spark application to perform computation on the distributed set of nodes. Uh, let's see what happens on the Spark cluster. To do that, we'll switch to a Yarn Manager UI. And uh, here we can see that uh, our cluster first have 10 active nodes and uh, it runs several applications here. One of them is our Spark shell that we just used to do some uh, conversions. And second one, it's just accepted application, the new application that uh, runs Spark R. So that's the application that uh, our server created. And you can see that this application has received all the resources of the cluster and now running computation in a distributed manner, manner on these 10 nodes. So if you switch back, we can see the progress of the calculations. And uh, now it's complete uh, in six seconds because the uh, uh, data set was fairly small for, for the cluster of 10 nodes. And we can uh, proceed with using this um, uh, freshly computed model. So first we can build a summary of this, take a summary of this model where we'll see all of the coefficients that were uh, evaluated. And also we can use built-in uh, RStudio functions to visualize this model. So let's see a, a chart of dependency between arrival delay and the day of the week. And this is a small sample, uh, so it has some interesting fluctuations of the data, but that gives you an idea of how we can use our server uh, to distribute computations on Spark and uh, share access to the, uh, any, uh, practically any data set that is available to, in Spark ecosystem. You can now directly perform your R analytics over those data sets as well. So that was uh, the demo uh, based on the R Studio. Uh, in addition to that, if you're a Visual Studio person, we also have a plugin, <coughs> R Tools uh, plugin for Visual Studio, which basically gives you a first class experience of programming in R inside of the familiar Visual Studio experience. 
And one of the features that, uh, that the R tools for Visual Studio supports is connectivity to the R server on HD inside. So that gives you a great uh, flexibility of using your local machine to perform your programming and then submitting your R server, uh, your R jobs to the, to the cluster of distrib uh, to the distributed cluster to perform some heavyweight computation. And uh, in the script, you can see uh, how we can uh, configure our script to connect to the remote HD inside cluster by specifying name of the session that you need to configure in PuTTY uh, to connect basically through SSH tunnel to the HD inside cluster. More details on this configuration are available in our documentation website. Okay, uh, let's recap. In this video, we looked at the new R server on HD inside and how it integrates with Spark. We looked at the core feature of our server, which allows you to run all R algorithms in production on large datasets without recording them in a different language. And we also looked at the, one of the new features, which connects all algorithms to uh, data sources and data formats in Spark and Hadoop Vault. If you'd like to learn more about our server, I can recommend recording of the more detailed R and Spark session from uh, Microsoft Machine Learning and Data Science Summit. And of course, documentation on the R server on HD Insight is always available for you uh, from this link. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.